You know, it's amazing to think that 70 years ago, someone recorded 11 hours worth of material on around 22 kilometers of this wire, which is as fine as a human hair. And for the last 60 to 70 years, it's probably sat hidden away without being revealed as what's actually on these reels. I have 11 of these reels, and over the past weeks, I've been restoring this wire recorder back to its former glory. And now it's ready to start playing these and just discover what's on these and see whether or not it gives us some clues as to the history of this machine and maybe who owned it. So I've got four reels I want to play on today's uh, video and I'll edit them down so you get to see the interesting bits. There's a Webster Chicago reel, there's a Boozy Hawks reel, and there's two Echo wire recording reels. So let's start by putting on the Webster Chicago reel. After all, it is a Webster Chicago player and uh, let's thread it up manually. Put it on the take up reel. It's not as convenient as modern technology, that's for sure. A couple of spins to make sure it's taking up okay and won't fall off. And then we hit the plate. about this is that on the first listening, even though the sound quality is actually quite good for its age, it seems to be running really, really slowly. To me, it's just not right. But the funny thing is when I had a sneak preview of some of the other reels, it was uh, obvious that some of the recordings were actually running quite normally. So some are fast, some are slow. So have a listen to this. I love you not only for what you are. So when I thought about it, I realised that this machine is an American machine. Uh, it's been brought out to Australia, so it runs on um, 110 volts, and that's why we have a transformer down from 240. But more to the point, in the US they run on 60 hertz. And in Australia, we run on 50 hertz. So when you run this machine in Australia, it actually runs slower than if it was in the US. So the first thing that this tells me is that these recordings were all made in the US and brought out to Australia. So when we put them on, they run slowly. And those recordings that when you play them back, they run at normal speed or obviously made here. So it's now easier to work out which ones were recorded in Australia versus the US. So thankfully there is a little trick we can play to uh, solve this problem though. So we'll just rewind it. Right. What we can do is take off this top plate. Never fucking comes off. Right. You can see the main uh, motor drive and the tyre that drives and engages the different uh, um, reels. What we can do, if I switch it off, and just slow that motor down, is we can actually put a spacer on that spindle to make it a bit fatter. And what that will do is it'll make the machine run a bit faster. So if I thread it up again, and I'll show you with the top plate removed. Turn it on. And now we'll play the same piece again, see what difference it makes. Why do I love you? 
I love you not only for what you are. So you can see it's made quite a bit of difference. So now we can play back some of the original music at what would have been the same speed as you'd uh, have listened to them if it was in America. The wind past the lands was mourned. So that's Franklin McCormack. He's one of the artists that's recorded on this particular reel. He apparently was a radio announcer personality who used to do uh, live shows in the US right up to the 70s when he died on air. There's a few other performers on here, people like Lily Pons and um, Bing Crosby even gets a feature at the end. But what was actually really interesting is when you get to the very end of this reel, there's a recording that I think uh, you might be interested in having a listen to. So let's try and get to that point. Well, greetings to you all the way down under from us here in Lyman Land. I was very happy to receive your letter. Uh, by the way, the cable came the same time the letter did. They were both waiting for me the other evening when I came home from work. I'll have this uh, wire in the post in the morning. The boy uh, called me this evening and said that he'd be leaving first part of the week, so I'll get it off to him. So I'll be sure to bring it back to you. I think it's very lucky having come over here just at the time that uh, I finished uh, recording this wire. I uh, was kind of expecting you all to come back to England from what you had written in one of your letters, but since you're not, I, uh, I'll do with your records as you ask. However, I'd like to keep them a while and uh, record some of them for myself. Well, how's your mother, Arena? We haven't heard from her in quite some time. Of course, we're not too good about writing. Well, that's about all from this end this time. Write and let me know when you get the wire. I hope that you like it. I must apologize for some of it, but uh, some of the records were not in the best of condition, so of course didn't uh, make a first class recording. But now, from this end, blue. So there you have it. First interesting little bit of information when I'll get off the wire. Obviously, not only with the wires used to record music, but they were used as a form of electronic letter back then. So, Lou was sending uh, a wire from Limey Land, which is slang for the UK, out to his sister arena in Australia. Uh, so that's the first little bit of information I've got around who might have actually owned this machine. So could it have been arena? Don't know, but we'll find out. Uh, and then when I played on a little bit further, there was another interesting clip. So we'll have a listen to that. Come on, Rhonda, I'm sure dead. Get away from me, Sandra. Get away from me. That's slaughtering me, Tyler. It's awful. Margaret, I'll get the brother. What's the fight about? We're finished. Everything's ended. The wicked will be killed. Now, talk sense, woman. Come on, pull yourself together. Talk sense, woman. Come on, pull yourself together. All right, I could possibly think with you. What's happening there is that this has been recorded over an older tape. I know. If I knew it wasn't going, I'd be all right. And the, on the older recording, it was a radio play, an ABC radio play called 26 Hours. And I'll make a, another video on that alone. Now, a little bit later on, there was another recording here. And I'm assuming this is from Lou's sister, Arena, who's living in Melbourne. She was reading from The Herald. So let's just have a listen to that. Champion New Zealander Dalvey and Melbourne stay in what's called dominated betting on Tuesday's Melbourne Cup after racing at Flemington today. End of test. So what she said there was that on Tuesday the Melbourne Cup's happening and that there are two favourites, the New Zealand horse Delray and Morse Cove. But she didn't actually say what year it was. So I did a bit of Googling and found out both those horses ran, in fact Delray won the 1952 Melbourne Cup. So clearly that recording was 1952. So now we know Arena, we know of Lou, and we know that it was recorded in both the UK and in Melbourne. So let's now have a look at another of the wheels. This time we'll go to the Boozy Hawks wheel and see what's on that one. <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, it gives us great pleasure to present Mr. Frank Hall. Well, I can, I can say welcome to Mr. and Mrs. John Hedden. They've been here a long time, but still. It's nice to have them. Nice to have them. One of the greatest privileges that ever happened to the Hall family living next door. One of the, one of the most pleasant things that you could possibly think that could possibly, that could have happened. So now we've got to meet the neighbours, the Hall family. So obviously Arena Adams and her husband, who now know is John, live next door to the, uh, the Hall family. So the next reel is uh, one of the Echo reels. And let's pop that on and see what interesting stuff we can unearth within that reel. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your flight captain, John Adams, speaking. <laughs> For your information, we're cruising at a flight altitude of 16,000 feet at a speed of 300 miles per hour. Your cabin is pressurized to 3,000 feet above sea level. Weather forecast for the rest of the flight to Sydney is fine. Hot. With a ground temperature at Sydney itself of 28 degrees. With a wind from the north at 15 knots. My on board. The hosties were magnificent. Good dinner. If you could have only seen the way they behaved in lay last night, you would travel, Don't always travel, and so I trust and hope that you have a most enjoyable flight. And we look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> so the last recording was interesting because it showed that um, Arena's husband was John Adams, and that he in fact was a pilot for Australian National Airlines, ANA, and later then Ansett Airlines. And when you Google him, he's in fact, you've, uh, there are records of him um, working for Ansett and retiring, I think it was in the early 60s. So we're getting to know a lot more about the Adams family now. And it's at this point we get introduced to the next generation of the Adams family. Daddy? 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 So in this last sound clip, we're going to jump forward two decades to 1968. So let's just have a listen to what I found. On this day, April the 26th, 1968, I, John Adams, have come to the end of reel one containing the voyages of Uncle Leslie and little comments about me, my father, and my mother, and their friends. I, John Adams, also, am playing with this little machine here, a Webster Chicago wire recorder operating on 110 volts through a mains transformer of 240 volts. This day, at precisely 7.38, I, John Adams, am recording this on the Zerf de Chicago wire recorder. The, a very old model of the tape. I, John Adams, will now play this back. Thank you. So there you have it, the end of the wire. So what we've discovered on this is two generations of the Adams family, their uncle, um, their uncle living in UK and Canada, uh, obviously Irina from Canada, and her husband John, who was the pilot for ANA, and presumably he's the one who brought this machine back from the US. And we've heard their son, and when he was a baby, and then again, as a teenager, he obviously discovered this device somewhere in a cupboard and uh, pulled it out and started playing with it and recorded those extra recordings at the end. So I think it's fair to say that this was owned by the Adams family. I don't know any more about it than that, but uh, interesting 
to get that kind of insight into this family that lived back in the, the 50s, some uh, 60 years ago. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll be doing a few more videos of some of the other wires in order to uh, expose what's on them. Oh, never. <laughs> Oh, I'm fine. I'm having a wonderful time. Thank you. Uh, from uh, from Hawaii, I did a 3,000 mile hop to uh, Nandi in the Fiji Islands. From Nandi, uh, I flew to uh, Auckland, New Zealand, and I was very much impressed uh, as uh, the coast, uh, the northern coastline of New Zealand appeared uh, uh, from the air as we uh, approached uh, Auckland where we landed. In Auckland we stayed very shortly, a matter of uh, two or three hours. And then we went on to Sydney. In Sydney, I uh, transferred uh, to a DC-6 aircraft of Australian National Airways. Uh, the name of this aircraft, uh, by the way, uh, was the Karana. And on the Karana, I uh, finally rode, uh, or rather flew, to Melbourne. Or after landing and uh, going through customs and so forth, uh, by my in-law, Johnny Adams. Uh, with Johnny, uh, I drove to uh, to their home in Kew, where my sister Irena was waiting for me. And indeed, it was a very happy reunion uh, with my sister, as I hadn't seen her for the past uh, four years or so, ever since uh, uh, she and Johnny were married uh, in 1949. Of course, uh, Irena came to Canada on one occasion uh, a year later, but uh, she didn't stay very long. Uh, our meeting at that time was a very short one indeed, I'm sorry to say. But uh, it's amazing how time can pass, indeed it can fly by. And now I find myself in Australia very unexpectedly, but I'm very glad to be here indeed. I was uh, very uh, glad to see my little niece uh, Leslie and uh, my little nephew uh, Johnny, as of course I had never seen them before. And the first thing that struck me as I uh, saw Johnny for the first time was uh, how much he resembled his dad. Really, really, it took off the old block. Of course, the little girl was a bit younger. And uh, I can uh, honestly say that I, I fell in love with her right away. She was really very, very cute Baba. And I'm very proud to be uncle to these two wonderful uh, babies. And since I've been here, I've been I've been down to the city of Melbourne itself on two or three occasions. I, I, uh, I must say that uh, uh, having never seen Melbourne before. So that was Bob on his way out to Australia, or he just arrived in Australia to stay with John and Irina, the family, who've just had uh, a couple of kids, next generation, Leslie and John Jr. And they're living out in queue somewhere. So little bit by little bit, we kind of get more insight into the family. Say goodbye, say goodbye, say goodbye to the old apple tree.
If my pappy had a nose that he'd be sorry that he growed it cause he died.